G'day, it's Justin Hogg from Right Source here, talking all things personal development, training. How much should you spend on training? It is a really interesting question. Um, I've seen a lot of businesses that put a budget in for training and they never spend it, and I see businesses who don't put any budget in for, for training and then spend a whole heap on it. Well, how do you work out what is the right amount to spend on training? It's a very interesting question. Probably the, the reason training is probably the one of the hardest areas to gauge is because it's very hard to quantify the benefit. Training is a long-term benefit. So whether you're training yourself or whether you're training your staff, the return that you get out of doing that work is very long in, in, in its payback. So it can take years to see the value. Or, alternatively, you can see the value quite quickly, but it actually continues to deliver for a number of years. So there's a long time period in terms of that assessment. I like to break this down into two sort of main topics. One is talking about training for yourself. So if you're the CEO or you're the business owner, how much should I spend on myself? And the other is your staff, the training of your staff. So when you look at yourself, again, with any expenditure you want to do, what are you looking to achieve? Is it, is it technical knowledge? Are you looking for personal growth? Are you looking for just experience? Understand what it is you're trying to achieve out of that, uh, out of that learning. That will then help dictate how much you can spend or how much you should spend. So, because again, if there's a certain amount of value you see in it, well, you shouldn't spend more than the value. Now, that is tricky again with training to understand what the value is, but at least having trying to think about it gives you a bit of a feel. The other thing with training that's interesting is that the cost tends to relate to how fast you want it, how, whether you want recognition and how personalized it is, those three things. So if you are happy to take your time, you don't need a certificate at the end and you don't need someone holding your hand to, to do the training or, or be there one-on-one, -on -one, usually the cost for training can be really cheap. Like YouTube, for example, like this video, Kids Training, um, it's free. So there's a lot of free material out there that you can use that helps you learn, that helps you grow, that you don't have to pay for. On the flip side, if you want something delivered to you quickly, if you want to get a certificate at the end that proves that you are um, have that qualification, or you want someone to personally train you and be hands-on and, and, and help you develop really specifically, that's gonna cost money. For example, if you want to get fit quickly, a personal trainer, that personal service, will help you do that more effectively because you've got accountability to a person, someone's customizing it to you, and you'll get better results quicker, but it will cost you more than if you just went to the gym or if you just did it at home. It will tend to be a different cost, but the outcomes will be different. Similarly with recognition, honestly, most people could train themselves how to be an accountant. It's not actually rocket science. Rocket science is a bit harder. So you could do that online with the materials like this, with the resources that are available, you could learn how to do accounting. If you want to, however, have a certificate to say that, hey, look, I have done the courses and I am competent as an accountant, that costs you more money because you need to go through an organization that has that registration process. So again, ultimately the outcomes could be the same. The cost is just going to be different. So understanding what you want to achieve, how quickly you want to achieve it, and why you want to achieve it is important when you're looking at your own training. Personal growth is one of the most interesting areas of training I find. And that, that really comes into your coaching and your mentoring sort of sphere because there is an amazing range of people who offer that service, who offer different aspects to that. The rates that you pay differ by quite a lot. When you're looking to get a coach or you're looking to do some personal growth, that is actually probably the hardest, uh, hardest decision in terms of working out what's the right place to start. How I approach it is looking for someone who can, well actually, the first thing before you look for somebody, you actually, if you want personal growth, you actually need to be ready for it yourself. And it comes to different people at different times. The value that I see out of that, that personal growth type training is it usually allows you to bring in the skills that you've learned, the experience that you've got, the values that you have, and help elevate those to a new level. That's really what it is. 
So you really want to find someone who can add something new or a different perspective and help create something better. I mean, that's what training is all about. It's about self-improvement and self-growth. So how much you spend on that? I've spent more than I thought was possible <laughs> on personal development, but I would say that I've had that investment returned multiple times in terms of what I've been able to achieve. So it is a leap of faith, but find the right person and it will definitely add some value to your life. In terms of your staff, it's a bit of a different question. For me personally, um, if what we should be looking at with our staff is if there's training that helps them do their job better, they should do it because as a business owner, if they're doing their job better, you're gonna get value out of that. Plus, if they want to be doing that training, like if they're actually asking to do training to allow them to do their job better, well, that for me is a great situation because one, they're engaged, they want to do their job better. And two, as a business owner, they're asking you for, for help in doing that job and expenditure that will effectively be reinvested back in the business through more efficiency or more accuracy, which is all beneficial to the owner as well as the staff member. So for me, that type of training is almost a no-brainer and is a yes on a more instances than it's a no. What's tricky as a business owner and what I see people grapple with is, well, say they want to get a professional qualification to help them do their job. Sometimes a business owner goes, well, hey, hold on a second. If they get that professional qualification, they can take that when they leave. Well, that's not fair. Like, I've paid for that. They shouldn't get to keep it. So what they tend to do is find a way to trap that employee in the business. Say, well, you can do this professional qualification, but if you leave, you need to pay for it. So it sort of traps the employee. Now, I understand the logic behind that, but I philosophically think that's the wrong move. My view on training is that you should be training your employees to leave, but having a workplace and a work environment that convinces them to stay. Whenever I'm looking at training somebody and growing them, I want to make sure that, yeah, sure, they're doing training that helps them do their job. But for people to stay engaged in your workplace, they need to feel like they're growing and that they're, they're developing as a person in their workplace too. And that isn't always something they can do on the job. So there is definitely an aspect of being able to provide training that helps with personal growth or just staff engagement of your staff that you know helps keep them engaged with the business. And that shouldn't be something that they have to pay you for. If you have your staff engaged and they like working at that place of employment, well then they'll stay and you'll get the benefit that you, that you invest in them in terms of their training. And again, training is a long play, it's a long game. So even if staff leave, you want to have a workplace and a work environment. If their self-development then allows them to come back in a different role, that is an opportunity. And then not only do you benefit on the training you give them, them you benefit on them going and taking that training and applying it somewhere else and coming back with more knowledge and skills to the business. So I think that whole don't spend money on people unless they're going to stay I think that's the wrong mindset. You should be spending money on people to help them get better, add value to your business, and focus on keeping them engaged in the business and you know valued, which by spending money on them, they do feel valued. So I think it's a self-perpetuating cycle. Either way you go. Brass tax staff training. How much should you spend? Well, for me, in most roles, there is some sort of technical skill required, whether that be simply using Excel or using software or how they do their job or safety. There's always something that someone can get trained on or refreshed on, even CPR, safety officer. I mean, that's valuable for your workplace. It's valuable for them. So I, as a ballpark, like to say, look, probably one to two grand a year I would spend on staff and training as just a base guide. Now, what's very important here is don't get trapped in the, we haven't budgeted for the training, so we can't spend it. This is, whenever you set a budget for training, it is, should only ever be a guide. If something comes up in terms of a new skill someone wants or a new area of work that opens up through getting some training, that should be looked at 
in isolation and without regard necessarily to the budget. So basically don't use your budget as a constraining factor when it comes to training, use it as a guide. That's all it's meant to be. So that's really my thoughts on training and how you sort of think about it from, or how I help people think about it from a business perspective. Breaking into two parts, thinking about for yourself, thinking about for your staff, always being aware of what goals you want to achieve out of that training, and thinking of it as an investment rather than a cost, because it is a long-term play, not here, not a short-term cost. Hope you found that interesting or a bit of a different perspective, I suppose, on training costs. We've got a number of videos here on YouTube in terms of helping you and your business uh, move forward and achieve its purpose. So definitely feel free to check those out. And if you want to keep seeing these videos, subscribe. And if you've got any comments or questions, definitely happy to answer them. Chuck them in the comments below. I'll definitely try and get back to you or, or look me up on LinkedIn and send me a, a direct message. Happy to help where I can. I suppose in terms of a training aspect, if you do want someone to help you with your financial aspects or financial mentor, that is definitely a service we offer and help people grow in terms of their understanding of the financial aspects of the business. So if that's something that interests you, definitely feel free to reach out. Happy to have a conversation. Otherwise, until next time, it's uh, Justin Hope from RightSource. Thanks for watching.